What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple finally released iOS 18.4 beta 1 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got the first beta for iPadOS 18.4, watchOS 11.4, macOS Sequoia 15.4, tvOS and HomePod OS 18.4, Vision OS 2.4, and for older Macs, we got Mac OS 14.7.5 and 13.7.5, and those were both the RC release. So a very rare Friday beta release rollout from Apple. But anyways, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS 18.4 beta 1. Starting off with the size, you can see it came in at a massive 7.72 gigabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, which was coming from iOS 18.3.1. And as far as the build number goes, if we head into our settings and check out the new build number, it is 22E5200S. So we have an S at the end of the build number, which indicates that we do have quite a few betas to go before the final release, which we'll talk about that final release near the end of this video. And if we go down to the modem firmware, that is now 1.53.02 for the iPhone 16 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.4 beta one? And the first thing has to do with the control center. So if we swipe down to go into our control center and we tap on the plus up in the top left and we go to add a control and we scroll down. The very first section here is new with iOS 18.4 and this is called ambient music. So what this does is you can add these toggles to the control center to play music based on that mood. So if you're trying to sleep, you can have sleep. If you're trying to chill, you can do chill. Same with productivity and well-being. And when you add those, this is what they look like right here in the control center. And if you go ahead and tap on, let's just say sleeping, for example, it will start playing that music that matches the corresponding mood. And if you go into the app switcher here, you can see, you know, what is actually playing that music. It's actually in Apple Music. So we'll go ahead and pause that, but you can see, you know, it's a spiritual embrace, and this is the appreciation for sleep. But you'll notice that if you go into the Apple Music application, it does not show that it's playing right there, which to me indicates that this does not require an Apple Music account, and it also is not going to mess with your, you know, Apple Music algorithm, which is nice. Let me go ahead and remove this one so we can get them all up there. So yeah, that is what those look like. This is really cool, and that's a kind of a better version of background sounds, in my opinion. It's kind of like a feature piggybacking off of that. It's obviously a different use case, but that's what it reminds me of. So that's the first thing that's new here and 18.4 beta one. And we also have something new with the sliders right here for our volume and our brightness. So you'll notice that if you go down, that turns white now. Before with iOS 18.3.1, if you went down to 0% on the volume or on the brightness, it would stay that blue color. And for brightness, it would stay that yellow color, but now it turns white for both the volume and for the brightness. And you'll also notice for our cellular toggle right here, it will actually change based on your signal. So right now it shows the full amount of bars, but that will change based on what your actual signal is. So you can see it went down right there. Now it only shows three bars and that shows up in the little mini representation of the widget platter right there as well. So before that just showed full bars no matter what, now it corresponds to your actual you know, cellular connectivity. And here's a change that a lot of people are gonna miss or just simply overlook, but it's something I noticed pretty much right away because it is a quality of life change. So if you go down to a section in the control center, say you wanna add something from the connectivity platter, we'll just go ahead and add cellular data. So it takes us right there, you know, to where it added that in our control center. But when we go back to add a control, you can see that before we'd have to go back to the top and then we'd have to go all the way back down to the bottom to where we just were if we wanna add more connectivity toggles. But with 18 Point four, if you tap on add control, it stays where you were last. So if you're in a section or if you search for something or if you're, you know, halfway down scrolling, it will take you right back to where you were. That way you don't have to start all the way at the top of control center again. This is a small change, like I said, but it's something very handy. And again, this does also work when you search for something. So if I search for ambient, like ambient music right here, and I add one and then I go back to add control, it remembers my search query and it, you know, shows me where I left off. Really nice. Now, after I installed iOS 18.4 beta one, I had to install the new Apple intelligence models and you'll see it shows right here, downloading support for Apple intelligence, connect iPhone to Wi-Fi and power while models are downloading. And this lasted quite a bit of time. It took a lot longer to download than I thought. So if you're seeing that, 
be sure to connect your device to power. So make sure it's charging while on Wi-Fi. That's gonna get you through that download process a lot faster, but it did take quite a bit this time around. I just thought I should mention that. Now also, Apple Intelligence is available in the EU starting with iOS 18.4. So this is a big change because of course EU users have not had Apple Intelligence yet. So it's now gonna be available in the EU starting with beta one of 18.4. Also, it's coming to more languages. So if you go into your settings here for Apple Intelligence in Siri, we're now going to have Apple Intelligence support for French, German, Italian, Portuguese for Brazil, Spanish, Japanese, Korean, and Chinese, as well as localized English for Singapore and for India. So if you've been in another country besides the supported countries before, this is going to be a big update for you. It's especially going to be a big update for those in the EU since they were the main ones who were left out of Apple Intelligence as a whole. Now, speaking of Apple Intelligence, we have another big change that we've been waiting on ever since iOS 18 beta 1 came out, ever since it was first introduced at WWDC. And that is if we go into our settings and go to notifications, right down here, we have a new section for Apple Intelligence. This was not there before. And you'll notice that not only do we have summarize notifications, which is not new, but we now have prioritize notifications. So this is the new feature that we've been waiting on for quite some time. And this allows Apple Intelligence to show you notifications that may be important in a separate section on the lock screen so you can catch up on what you may have missed. So I've tried getting this to work. It does not work for me. I have a ton of notifications here, but it's not categorizing them just yet for me. It probably just has to learn my notifications and everything, but this is off by default. So you might want to go in here and enable this if you have Apple Intelligence turned on. That way you can have your priority notifications show up above all the other, you know, perhaps irrelevant notifications that you might have on the lock screen alongside the important ones. I could already envision this becoming one of my favorite Apple Intelligence features because it's something that's going to make a difference, you know, a fundamental difference to how I use my phone on a day to day basis. It's going to really help me see those important notifications right away from my lock screen. So I'll report back. I'll probably show you guys this in action in Apple Weekly tomorrow or at some point in the future once I get it working properly on my lock screen. We also have a change in the Image Playground application. So if you have Image Playground and you tap on the plus right here to choose the style for your you know, Image Playground image here, we now have the option to choose Sketch. So before it was just animation and illustration, but now you can create a sketch of whatever you add into here. And they look quite interesting. So you can see it kind of looks like a, a book, which I guess is the point of that. So this is the combination that led to this sketch right there. So pretty cool to have more options in here. It is quite buggy in 18.4 beta one, I have to say a lot more buggy than 18.3. So just keep that in mind. In the messages application, if you go into the emoji picker and you look right here to the right of the search field to describe an emoji, we now have a change to the Genmoji button. So before it just showed the glyph icon and that was it. Now it has the full text along with a slightly larger version of that glyph icon. So it's more obvious what this actually does since a lot of people were kind of confused and kind of just missed that that button was even there before. Now, for those wondering about visual intelligence on the iPhone 15 series, we did hear that it will be coming to the iPhone 15 series. However, it is not enabled just yet with iOS 18.4 beta one. So I did test this on my iPhone 15 pro max and I do not have visual intelligence. So, you know, we will see that in the control center. So it will be a control center toggle, which of course you can map to the action button as well. Since before we did need the camera control. Now it's just going to be a simple control center toggle. But once again, it is not there with beta one, but I would expect that in the coming betas. Now, as far as the big Siri changes coming in iOS 18.4, it does not appear that any of those are in iOS 18.4 beta one. So the on-screen awareness, you know, the personal context, all of those things do not appear to be here in 18.4 beta one you've always been able to do things like what's on my screen right now and when you say that it will just send it to chat GPT so that's nothing new but you know here in 18.4 beta 1 we do not have any of the features that were advertised which we do know that some of those are coming in iOS 18.5 but I would still expect some of those here in 18.4 maybe just in a future beta in the shortcuts application we have a new action for open conversation so this allows you to open a specific conversation in the messages application which is quite cool you can see you can select from the contacts right there so if 
I select this contact, it will open that conversation when I run this shortcut. So let's try this real quick. Let's press on play and you can see it opens up that specific conversation. We also have a change to the Siri voice for Australia. So if you go into your settings and go to your Apple intelligence and Siri settings, and then you go into voice and then to Australian, you can see that we now have four options. Whereas before in 18.3.1, we only had two options. Now there's also a new standalone Apple vision pro application for the iPhone with iOS 18. .4, so I did not get this to show up here in beta one, but it will be coming with iOS 18.4 as Apple put out a press release talking about Apple intelligence coming to the Apple Vision Pro with Vision OS 2.4. And there's also now an application for the iPhone to be able to queue applications and games to download, to discover new spatial content and experiences, easily find helpful tips and quickly access information about their device from their iPhone. So it's going to be very similar to what we have with the watch app application. So if you have an Apple watch, you know how you have the application to manage your Apple watch. I'm imagining that this application will work very similarly. So it's going to be very similar to what we have with the watch for the 12 people out there with the vision pro like myself. Now here's a cool change in iOS 18.4 and Apple is pretty much Sherlocking a lot of the recipe applications out there with this feature. So if you go into the Apple news application and maybe not because this is a paid service. So you do have to have Apple news plus for this. So maybe Maybe it won't Sherlock some of those applications. But anyways, if you go into Apple News Plus here and you go into the food section, we have News Plus Food. And this is going to show you recipes that you can save and just follow along with. So let me show you why this is cool. So you can see the interface here is awesome. It's very Apple-like. It reminds me of you know the invites application and sports all their you know new design language for these applications so you can see what it looks like right there you can see the ingredients the instructions all of that so if we go here and go to cook you can see it shows us basically the directions in an Apple music lyrics like interface, which is pretty cool. And you can kind of see how that goes there. And if you tap on the timer, you can set a timer right from this section and you can go back and forth to the ingredients and the directions as well and swipe down to see more information about that. And again, you can save these for offline use as well and by the way you could also search for things as well and you can see different categories up here and there's also things like weeknight chicken dinners kind of just different categories of recipes as well popular categories bon appetit all recipes you know you can see there's quite a bit in here and even the filter up here is pretty cool as well because you can filter by how long it takes to cook that item along with the dish type and more and for ipad os 18.4 and mac os 15.4 we now have the new categorized mail ui so the ui here where you can change you know the category so between primary you know you have your transactions your updates and your promotions or you can see all mail this new interface here is finally available for the ipad and for the mac with this latest update now taking a look Look at the release notes for iOS 18.4 beta one. There are quite a few in here. So there are two known issues for Apple intelligence, but both of those do have workarounds. So they're not a big issue. We do also have a resolved issue for notifications where scrolling through notifications might cause them to flicker or collapse momentarily. I had that bug. So that's good to see that fixed. There is a known issue for Siri. You know, you can see right there for Siri suggestions might fail to complete successfully. But if we go down a little bit further, we do have something pretty important here that you might need to to know about and that is for Wi-Fi calling so it says Wi-Fi calling might not work for US cellular customers on iOS 18.4 beta. And the important part to know here is that the workaround is to basically downgrade to iOS 18.3 to enable Wi Fi calling. So if you're somebody who relies on Wi Fi calling a lot, you need to avoid iOS 18.4 beta one until this issue is fixed. And then there's a known issue for writing tools when you tap on the replace button right there. And you can see that there is a workaround for that as well. But as far as overall performance here with iOS 18.4 beta, one it's honestly not great like especially in applications like image playground it's very buggy it's very slow i've also noticed some stutter in settings and pretty much all the apple intelligence features are just a bit buggy here in 18.4 beta one so just keep that in mind it is a first beta so that is kind of expected i should not need to say that but i still do want to mention that it's not going to be the most stable build i've not heard of anything catastrophic happening to people so i wouldn't say there's any critical bugs that i'm aware of but as far as just overall performance it does not feel quite as good as it did in 18.3.1 which of course is expected that's a final release this is a beta after all now we did run a geekbench 6 test here the cpu and we scored a 3526 on the single core 
8767 on the multi core and you can see how that compares to the previous runs it actually scored higher than this build of 18.3.1 which is quite interesting since it doesn't feel as good you know stability wise but that is good to see at least that the geekbench score is a bit higher and then as far as battery life goes battery life seems to be a little bit worse than it was before as well which again is expected from a beta one i'm on 86 percent i believe i started the video with over 90 percent so you know it went down quite a bit in that period of time a little bit more than what i'm used to so i would not expect battery life to be quite as good yet here with beta one which again is expected so let's talk about what to expect next because we have a very rare friday release here for ios 18.4 beta one again i cannot remember the last time we had a friday beta release i know we've had public releases but beta releases on friday are very rare so i would not expect to see ios 18.4 beta 2 for at least two weeks so you know the week of the third is a possibility or even the week of the 10th of march is a possibility since we got this on a friday so usually with the 0.4 updates between beta 1 and beta 2 there's typically a two week gap so i doubt that apple is going to release another beta on a friday so that tells me that we're either going to see it within two weeks or a little over two weeks if it's within two weeks it's going to be the week of march 3rd if it's a little over two weeks it's going to be the week of march 10th but again at this point it's hard to tell exactly which day that would be so it could be right there on march 11th so we'll have to wait and see and then after that of course we are going to see more betas and then the rc and then we will eventually see the final release of ios 18.4 at some point in april i would imagine that that would come on the week of april 7th or the week of april 14th but of course we will have to wait and see how this beta cycle goes so that is everything i found so far in ios 18.4 beta 1 i will continue digging through the software and finding new features and new changes no matter how small they are so be sure to keep it locked to the channel so you don't miss out on any of those new features and changes in ios 18.4 and of course future versions as well but if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also again be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future ios update videos just like this one but anyways guys thanks for watching and i'll see you soon